Hello, everyone, and we're very happy to be here today. We have uh, four WizKids presenting to you for the next hour. I'm Brian Kinsella. I'm the COO of WizKids. I'm Jimmy O'Brien. Patrick, next. Sorry, go yep. Patrick O'Hagan, uh, RPGs. I'm Jimmy O'Brien. I work on Heroclix. I'm Zeb Schlesinger. I work on board games. And we're going to jump right into our presentation in uh, just a second. First off, we want to invite you to our WizKids Direct private Facebook group. If you go there and answer a few questions confirming you're a retailer or manager of a store, you can get some behind the scenes information, get questions answered that we don't cover here. We also announce things uh, such as reprints and product availability. Next slide. Uh, we also talk about things like merchandising solutions for your store, uh, things that we're working on that we've heard from retailers they'd like to have us come out uh, into the marketplace with. Next slide. And there's a lot of questions like, what is this product configuration? What's a small, what's a tall? And we're not gonna get into that here, but if you go again to the Facebook group and you're not sure, we, the other retailers can answer you. And if you give us a day or two, we're pretty good at getting back to your questions. I'm gonna turn it over to Patrick O'Hagan now. Hey everyone, how are you? Uh, so my name is Patrick O'Hagan and I get the uh, exciting kind of job to talk to you about the things coming down the pipeline from WizKids around RPGs. Uh, specifically, if you talk about RPGs, one of the things that I think we, we want to let you know, and I think that everyone already knows, uh, is D&D is hot, right? RPGs are just on fire. D&D specifically is just on fire. Uh, and one of the things that you should know, and I think you do, is that we're connected to what's going on with D&D. When I say we're connected, what's going on with D&D, we are aligned with Wizards of the Coast and uh, specifically with Paizo and Wizards of the Coast for product releases and what's coming out. And that's, I think, very important because we want to make sure that you know that as they build product, we actually will build product as well. One of the other things I, I think that is important to, to kind of share with you is that we have started focusing on creating a kind of customer segmentation. And, and what is that other than just a fancy name? Well, that what that really means is that we're starting to create products for specific customers in mind. So for instance, for new customers, uh, or about customer acquisition. So we can get at, where do I start with miniatures? I just started playing, uh, miniatures are expensive. How do I have an entry into miniatures that are uh, basically expensive, right? A low cost entry. For those core customers, so like we wanna make sure we that we have minis that they want and that they collect. For those people who buy everything, and that maybe buy one brand or two brands or every single thing, we want to make sure that you understand that we create spectacular product uh, that we're going to talk about in the next, I would say, 30 minutes. But we want to let you know that this is definitely something that is in our, on our minds as we're creating and building out the product for you guys. So one of the things that I get first things, and I was at Alliance Open House and uh, last year, and I, a number of retailers came to me and said, hey, I'd love to get, uh, you know, uh, Tyranny of Dragons. I'd love to get Elemental Evil. Are you ever going to reprint those? And as as we started talking, I think a lot of people didn't know that that oh, by the way, we do reprint them. And for the most part, we reprint almost every single set. Now we're not in stock at all times, but on that WizKids Direct channel that Brian mentioned, we're going to have stock availability of pre-painted back sets in the next couple of weeks. Right now we have the unpainted availability and you can go to there to get our unpainted availability for our miniatures. But in the future, we're actually gonna have the pre-painted availability. So you'll be able to determine what we have in stock. Now, and then of course Alliance has to purchase that, but again, it goes back to that's what we have in stock. But I wanted to just let you know that that's coming. So I'm gonna probably spend the next 30 minutes, not probably, I will spend the next 30 minutes going over with you uh, really the core new releases from each brand that we have, D&D, Paizo, and WizKids, uh, and really just talking about what's coming. 
first of all, I want to just talk about what we've done with D&D. And so if you think about D&D, we have Mythic Odysseys of Theros, uh, which has the, the premium, which is the uh, Polychronos. Uh, that brick and booster is available. They're spectacular. Uh, again, it goes back to it's a magic crossover set for D&D uh, that we came out in August. The other thing that I want to talk about is what is just on fire, which is the, the Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. So Icewind Dale, Rhyme of, the, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. We have a full set of bricks and boosters coming out. And then, of course, we have the Shardle and Dragon. Well, the Shardle and Dragon is uh, near sellout, and we already are reprinting more. Um, but again, it goes back to get it now and order it now. I think Alliance has some uh, specifically still left. But the fact is just this, as you probably know from your own uh, stores, this is a really big release from Wizards. This is a really big, big release from us. And uh, we've just seen and heard great feedback across the board on Icewind Dale. I think uh, going along with Icewind Dale is, is back in August, we released uh, a kind of standalone adult dragon. Uh, this dragon sold out even before it launched. Uh, and we are reprinting this, but I can tell you if you can get your hands on this and more of these, more coming in January. But again, it goes back to the, the, the adult white dragon kind of started our series of adult dragons uh, that you're going to see of. And I'm going to talk about some of them once coming up, but we're going to basically do every single adult dragon as a kind of special prime box. And that's uh, this is available now and reprinting uh, to available to land in January. But what's, you know, those are the things that we just released. What about what's coming soon? Uh, well, to support Wizards of the Coast release of Curse of Strahd kind of box set, the kind of special edition box set they came mm -hmm. out with, we decided to uh, go into uh, that with a lot of detail. And so we came out with two boxes to support that. Well, the first is Covenant Covenants, which comes out next month. Uh, and you can see some of the minis here. The, the next one we have is Legends of Barovia. And again, two box sets, two windowed box sets. The, the price of them is both $39.99. Uh, but the popularity of these and just how hot these are kind of drove us to think, well, maybe we're missing some NPCs. And so I want to let you know that we, we are going to create a third box uh, of this coming out next year. I don't have a time yet, but we're gonna basically start, start working on that now. So a third box of the Curse of Strahd will be out. So again, but two are coming out next month. I just wanted to share that with you. What are some other things that are coming out? Well, you know, I mentioned that, that segmentation push and, and how we're working to uh, get at multiple different customers uh, who are collecting or want to play with miniatures. So the number one thing I get asked uh, uh, is, hey, Miniatures are so expensive. How can I, I, you know, I'm 18 years old, I'm 17 years old, and I have $20. How can I get started? Well, one of the things that we went, we've been working on, I would say, over the last two years, is how we create and work with Wizards of the Coast, and D&D specifically, to create a really low-cost entry for miniature collectors. And so what we're going to come out with, and these come out in next month, is a series of four SKUs, and four basically SKUs that are 2D acrylic miniatures called Idols of the Realms. So they're D&D Idols of the Realms. So they're all D&D figures. They're all exquisitely sculpted in 3D. And what we do is we actually flatten them to give you a 3D feeling. So you can kind of see the ghoul here and a twig blight here. Uh, the, the fact is what you're looking at specifically is a miniature that we sculpted in 3D and then took flattened and then basically put on a 2D acrylic on a base. So we're coming out with, with these sets. Now, the good thing about these sets, I'll show you these first two and then the next two. The good thing about these sets is they're all $14.99. And they basically each will come with around 14 to the, with the highest number of sets, the, side, the sidekick pack with 26 minis, right? So 26 minis for $15. And this is really focused on acquisition. This is really focused on, hey, I don't even know where to start. Where do I start? Well, you may want to say, I want to play D&D. What do I start? Well, you take them to the Essentials Box Kit that Wizards of the Coast came out with, and you say, here are some companion SKUs that you can buy that actually have all the minis that you'd need for the actual set. So we're really excited to talk about 2D. And what I want to share with you is specifically with 2D is that we're going to release more and more of these. And I'll show these to you. I'll talk about them in the next couple of minutes. But I'm really excited about this because this is going to be very hot. And this is kind of the first of many things into the foray of, of getting at acquisition and new customers.
So the next thing I want to talk about that's coming after that is in November, we have the fourth D&D set of the year. And so what 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 this means as Fangs and Talons. So Fangs and Talons will come out. Uh, the, the brick will be at 135.92 retail. Uh, the Purple Worm, which is just spectacular. Uh, you can see it here. Uh, it's just it's just amazing at uh, for forty nine ninety nine. But the core thing I want to share with you is that we're really dedicated to releasing four pre painted blind boosters uh, sets each year for D and D, and then we're going to talk about Pathfinder uh, later. Um, but the the what this means is this is the fourth set, and what is Fangs and Talons? Well, it's kind of a mixture of of characters and creatures, and Fangs and Talons is kind of like the Monster Menagerie of the past, but again, just called something different. So it's a lot of monsters with things and talons. It has the purple worm. It has some dragons, of course, but it also has the uh, fan favorite, the, of course, flail snail. Um, so the flail snail is really amazing and looks looks really good. And that comes out in November. We're really also happy for something we've been working on for two years uh, as well, is the tower. Now, this this thing is amazingly big. Now, you look at that MSRP of $249, right? And you're like, wow, that's expensive. Well, I mean, this thing is so big. Let me show you the next slide because this is me with just the picture of the box. I mean, you can see I am not a small person. Uh, and this is a very, very big, big set. I, you, I, I just, it is massive in scale and it is meant to be massive in scale. I mean, that's why it's the $249 price tag. But, uh, you know, again, going back to this, this will be available in November and it's part of that same prime uh, type of thing, like the 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 ship that we came out with. Right. So the 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 we're going to be coming out with more and more of these, I would say, prime minis as time goes by uh, the ship, the tower. Right. We have the yawning quarter, which I'll talk about. I just want to let you know, that, again, that that this gets that segment of customer that comes into your store and, you know, tends to buy everything. Right. Um, so again, it goes back to this is that next one coming out in November. We're very happy about that. So I mentioned the White Dragon, and the White Dragon is the first kind of large release of the kind of adult dragon series we had. So we started with Sapphire, we went to White, uh, and then we're going to Black. We're starting with the Chromatics, of course, and this comes out in December. So again, it, it is in that same ilk as the other, as the White Dragon. It'll be spectacular. It is spectacular. Um, uh, you can see the picture here. It is quite large. Uh, you know, dragons just tend to be a little bit larger in size. Uh, and it, it it is just, it comes out with a special box for $69.99. Additionally, to continue to support that that kind of entry level acquisition, we have and worked with uh, Wizards of the Coast to create some paper craft. So when you say, when we say paper craft, no scissors, no glue, it all kind of clips into place. We have two sets of houses coming out that help you kind of build the terrain of that Icewind Dale environment that you have, um, that your players are going to be engaging with. The first one we have coming out is, is kind of a paper craft set, which is the, is the, the, is the towns. Uh, so it's just a 10 town set with kind of three generic buildings. And then we have the lodge, which is kind of more of an A-frame lodge. Both of these are low in price. So if you think of those three houses come at $19.99 and the actual lodge is at $15.99. But again, this is the first kind of four way into, into paper craft you're going to see a lot more specifically as it comes to D&D. So this is, again, something low entry, but it's, it's going to be a playable. And the, the thing is that you can actually lift the roof up and actually play inside. So it's all the scale. There's there's grids. Again, it just goes on and, and talks about how we're really trying to get at that kind of like element of play at low cost uh, so that we can actually populate towns, villages, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so I've talked about kind of 2020, uh, and I think a lot of us are very happy to get out of 2020 and to move into 21. So let's talk about where we're going specifically with D&D. Uh, with D&D, one of the things that we're talking about is we're continuing our trophy plaque series with the owlbear. You can kind of see a nice picture uh, that we have from our partners in manufacturing of the sea of owlbears. But again, it goes back to, this comes out in January and has the MSRP of $450, mm -hmm. but I think this will be a great next step. Additionally, what comes out in January is uh, some of you may have seen this as the Hand and I Vecna. So the uh, what we're going to be doing is working with wizards to come out with life-size artifacts and legendary weapons. This is the first of them that's coming out, but you can imagine there's going to be many more, and we're already working on things like the I'll, you know I'll give you I'll just give you that helpful hint. Uh, like you can think of like the Staff of the Magi maybe, or like the Wand of Orcus, or 
you, you get my point. So life-size uh, elements within the kind of D&D universe. Speaking of Orcus, uh, well, you know, coming out in January, we also have the first of our Fiend series. And so uh, one of the things that I had said is coming into this is like, hey, where are all the arch devils and Lord, you know, demon lords? And so we're coming out with a pre-painted demon lord set. And this comes out in January, and this is the first one with Orcus. The second one will come out in the middle of the year, and then we have two more coming out th during the second half of the year. A lot of you have seen this one. So this is uh, our first of the gargantuan uh, dragon series. So again, you think, wow, there's a lot of dragons coming out. Yeah, there are a lot of dragons coming out. Um, this is our first gargantuan. You can see the image here. You, I, I, on the right-hand side, on the top of the dragon, you can see a little dragon rider. That actually comes off, so that little harness comes off. And uh, this is Abertures, uh, who is, plays a small little role in Icewind Dale, small little role. Uh, I think really just there. Uh, she is an ancient dragon, an ancient gargantuan dragon. But again, this is the first of three gargantuan dragons we're coming out with this year. And you can kind of see that price tag fully painted comes out at $99.99. But we're really, really super happy about Average Race. And then dragons continue. In February, we have the next chromatic adult. And so you can kind of see the first images of that, of that red dragon. The red dragon is going to be a little bit bigger than the black and the white. But again, for $69.99, you're going to have a fully painted dragon uh, adult size. That's huge. And then we go into uh, the March set. So this is kind of our first release of this. Uh, so uh, we're, it, right now, it's, going to be, it's called Boneyard. And it's everything undead and everything ooze and icky and gross. Uh, from the booster brick, you can kind of see um, that... The, the zombie uh, T-Rex, uh, of course, because, you know, uh, zombie T-Rexes are, you know, ever present. But two of the premiums in the set are actually coming out of the blue Dracolich and the green Dracolich, both separately, both for $69.99. And you can see how spectacular they look. And they're quite large, again. So, again, two more dragons. But, of course, if it's an undead set, we have to make them Dracoliches. Then the full booster will come out, and this comes out in March. This is the first D&D set of the year. And then finally, uh, with the, you know, uh, the, for the, the, I would say April, we have the adult blue dragon. So the adult blue dragon comes out in April. And I say finally, it's in, we're not finally, we have green left and green will come out in the second half. But again, this is a picture of what the blue dragon looks like. And again, for $69.99. So you're going to see a constant theme of what we're coming out with when it comes to the, some of these really cool dragons. And then last, you know, again, we talked about this. For those of you who are at Gamma with me and you actually saw this live, uh, we, we have the Yawning Portal. So the Yawning Portal does come out in April. I think one of the things you'll see there, again, this is that same thing, like, like the, the, the Falling Star, like the Tower, right? It's this Prime Mini. It's $400, but it comes with three floors. It comes with so much furniture, and it comes with spiral staircases, and it comes with just everything you see here more right that fireplace lights up in the back uh and one of the things that we thought about is hey you know we're coming out with this really big miniature that's a prime and has all these really cool things what if people don't have the 400 dollars uh to actually spend because there's going to be a lot of people that don't have 400 dollars to spend right uh so what we're coming out with is a series of uh i would say SKUs that are associated with the yawning portal we have the yawning portal friendly faces which is all the characters uh, that are in the, you know, like, like Durgan and Volo. And if you're familiar with Dragon Heist, a lot of the same uh, characters in uh, the Yawning Portal. Uh, we're also coming out with, you know, beds and bottles and a number of different, we're coming out with three additional SKUs that help take some of the elements in, in, out of the Yawning Portal. Again, not the, not the core elements, because we're not going to have a side element for the actual portal itself, but some of the beds and some of the, some of the tables and some of the bottles and some of the other things to really give people an option to buy into some of the kind of in and tavern aspects of this without actually having to spend $400. But again, you'll see that coming up in April. Now I mentioned to you that 2D was something that we we're gonna focus on. And so one of the things you're gonna see is a 2D set for Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Rain coming out in January, uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage uh, minis coming out in March and Monster Menagerie coming out, M Monster Menagerie one coming out in May. So we're really going back to the kind of I would say set of minis that people have collected and want and having again these 2d 2d minis these idols of the realm available uh and that sets that players want right so again it goes back to that 
every single one will be $14.99. And we're going to keep to that price because really that's what we think is a really good entry price for a lot of good quality minis. All right, I talked about our pre-painted minis. Let's talk about our unpainted minis because you can imagine there's a lot going on with our unpainted minis. First, uh, I want to just, just comment on our, our paint night kit. The, the first one, Manticore, was, did really, really well. The Ogre Zombie, is, which is going on right now, uh, is just doing the same. Uh, we, I, I, I think we underestimated just how big this, this product would be. And with the, with the Manticore, we created a number of, of sets. With the Ogre Zombie, we created the next, right? The event can be held in virtually in, every, in any store. And, it, you know, Hobby is, this right now is a U.S. exclusive and includes the miniature paint and brushes if you're not familiar with this, but obviously it, it, it looks really good and also comes with a video that when you go to the video has a really interesting way to share uh, how you paint that from a, from a really good professional. But the, the core thing of this, uh, look at that little animation, uh, is, is talking about what's coming. And I, I do want to give kudos to uh, Millennium Games on the right hand side. You can see a picture that they sent us where they did a socially distant paint night event uh, just this past weekend. Uh, and so that went really, really well for them to, to do the actual Orber Zombie. But you can see we have more coming. And so the event can still be virtual in any store. We'll have enhanced win functionality. The events will run globally. Now, that does that when it means run globally, we're going to be available to be in any, any, anywhere we, we, we get it. But you just have to make sure your distributor has it. Of course, for our conversation with Alliance, Alliance will have it. And so that's the core thing, of course, for this. So with the Dire Troll coming out in February, we have the Red Slot in April, a Death Tyrant in June, and a Bone Claw in August. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that we're increasing the number of prints that we do for these so we can actually scale this up. And more to come because there's just so many cool things coming with the Paint Night events and to really make these excited so that you'll have what you need and what you want in store. So what's coming? Well, uh, in November, we launched Wave 13. And, and the Wave 13 is just, just jam-packed full of just amazing minis. And we continue to do that. So you can kind of see the unpainted version. You have the colorized version here of just what they could look like when painted. Obviously, they come unpainted, but I just wanted to kind of talk about how really cool these were. And then also with this, we have, we're introducing Magic the Gathering minis. So a lot of you probably heard this, but what we've done is we've looked at the Magic minis and we've looked at what have a good crossover to be close to D&D and just really want to make sure that we do them in the same scale. And so you have monsters and just more ideas and more things to paint that are really cool to actually bring to your table in whatever way you want to use them. So here's a, a kind of a updated minis recap. One of the first things I want to talk about is that we've gone to reprints six times a year. And that's a core thing that we're going to continue to do is reprint, reprint, reprint. So in August, we have another reprint coming in. We just did. We have Wave 13 coming in November. We have another reprint coming in February. Uh, we have the Wave 14 coming in March. We have a reprint coming in May. And then, of course, our Wave 15 coming in June. So we're really dedicated to making sure that we have the minis you have in that, that are in stock. And I made reference to that WizKids Direct channel. We post probably every two weeks the amount of the minis that we have for availability. So you can go to your Alliance rep and you can actually say, hey, this is available. I don't see it. You know, I'm hoping that Alliance has it all. But if they don't, they can. you can go to your Alliance rep and say, hey, WizKids has this. Can you order it for me, please? So it just helps do that all together. And then, of course, with the D&D recap, there's just more stuff coming. I, I don't have enough time to talk about all the things that we have with D&D coming out. Uh, but you can imagine there's just it's just jam-packed. So uh, one of the things that we wanted to talk about is just how we manage that large unpainted line, because it's getting up there. We probably have around 450 unpainted line. And it's hard to manage things that sell well. But I can tell you that starting in, in November, what you're going to see is a number of things that we're going to retire. So we're re moving forward, we're going to retire five to 10 per wave, which means that we're just going to discontinue. That they're just going to not be available uh, to, to, to basically print or, uh, in stores anymore or even to order. We're going to enhance miniatures. And what does that mean? We're just going to basically take a fighter that we released as wave one, repose it, do something different with it, and then discontinue the first one. And then, of course, we're going to move some to a box. But this is just that hard look at the line. During the November launch of Wave 13, you're going to probably see around 60 miniatures that fit into any one of these. So we're taking the line down because we have to, not because it's not selling, 
but because we have to. So well, that's it with D&D, but let's talk about some of the exciting things coming from Pathfinder uh, and specifically Pi stuff. The first one is the City of Lost Omens. I don't know if you've seen this set, but this set is spectacular. The two dragons, uh, you have the black dragon, you have the, the red dragon are just amazing, as well as the boosters. They're available now and with, I would say, the red and black dragon come with an MSRP of $59. And the, the, of course, the, the brick is as usual. Along with this set, we came out with a Thieves Guild. And this Thieves Guild is just, again, it has an LED light. It you know, has really fun things that you can actually play with. And again, it's available now. We just released the premium painted miniatures for Pathfinder. And I can tell you, they look spectacular. And so these are available now uh, and just came out with an MSRP of basically $7.99 each. And then I'm very happy to give you the three foot tall goblin that comes out in November. Now this is so many people is look at this army of goblins that we got the picture of. Uh, but again, this goblin is so spectacular. Uh, this, uh, I think we're excited about it. I know Paizo is excited about it. Um, the, this will start the idea for us to create more, uh, I would say life-sized creatures for them in the future, but this is available in November at limited quantities. So please get yours now if you want, but it, it, it is three feet tall and it looks exactly like what you see in the right-hand picture. Again, the sword's not on that, but you can see the sword on the actual picture on the, on the left-hand side. Also coming in 2021, uh, coming in March, we're having our first Starfinder release. And so if you think about this, coming in 2020, we have Starfinder. I know there's been a lot of talk about this, but we're really excited. There's gonna be ships, there's gonna be monsters, there's gonna be, uh, there's gonna be lots of different things. The, the premium figure is kind of a, base alpha, right? So it just has tons of stuff. And then in, in April, we have Darklands Rising, which is the next Pathfinder set. And this is going to be some, this is going to be so many really cool things we have here. The premium is that gold dragon on the right. And I swear to God, if I had enough time, I just got this yesterday. It is so spectacular. It's gargantuan in size. It's beautiful. It's a gold dragon with a little bit of quirk. And I'll let you read the story to understand what that quirk is. But we have a lot of different things coming in this set that just make it a little bit unique. So again, coming in, uh, coming also with with our Wave 13, we have the Pathfinder uh, Wave 13 minis. Uh, and then what I can tell you is that coming in Wave 14, you're going to start mm -hmm. actually seeing Starfinder uh, minis. But those are going to be really cool and unpainted minis. But just showing you what's coming, we uh, we have a, a I would say a very full year for for Paizo next year. All right, let's talk about Warlock. A lot of you probably know what Warlock is or have seen it or have it in your stores, but let's just talk about it. First of all, let's talk about configuration. At launch, we launched everything in purple boxes and that was grand. But one of the things that we started getting to is understanding that maybe we want color differentiation of our mm -hmm. packaging. And so what we started with mm -hmm. is we have our base sets that are gonna come, continue to come out in purple and the base sets moving forward will be 129.99 except for those launch queues we're going to keep at 99. Mm -hmm. So the launch queues that we had that we came out with back in mm -hmm. July, we're actually going to keep them to the same size or same price. The expansions are going to be $79.99. Mm -hmm. And I really want to talk about the expansions because expansions are, if, if I've already bought the base set uh, mm -hmm. and I, um, I want the full walls, how can I have a way that I actually don't have to get the tiles? Well, again, these expansions will come with the walls and everything you need, but it won't come with the tiles. And so we're trying to get at uh, uh, an entry price for people to not pay the entire uh, one, 129 for the full walls mm -hmm. and a, a future base sets. And then we're going to have accessories in blue. So we basically have purple, green, and blue, and they're going to all be the same mm -hmm. price. And we're going to make sure we fill the content to, to, to be that, that, that clean and easy. The other thing, uh, well, when we launched Warlock, we launched them with really hardy clips, like very hardy clips. In fact, we over-engineered the clips to the point where you could pick it up and there's very little give and take. Well, there's a potential for us to maybe we overdid it. And so uh, we, we, we have now made available uh, clips for a you know, Warlock Easy clips that are 100, 100 pack uh, for uh, $4.99. And these clips are really, really soft and very, very pliable. When I say very, very soft, you can just push them into a clip and a Warlock tile and it goes in very easily. I can also say that moving forward, this will be the standard of uh, where we're moving forward with Warlock Clips. And so this will be the standard you'll see in the in the full walls. It'll be the standard for all the expansions that I'm gonna talk about 
And then we're gonna, and then we also have made available these clips. I know uh, they're available to order now. They're four ninety nine retail, and they have a hundred clips, and they're just super, super, super easy. We also changed the color on them to make them blue, so they'd be different. And like I said, in all future sets, these are going to be the standard clips inside Warlock. But I do want to talk about what's coming. So next month, sorry, next month, uh, in November, it's not October yet, uh, we have the full wall set coming out for the full wall tiles of both the town and village. Uh, we also have the expansion pack. Remember, I talked about this expansion pack. The expansion pack doesn't actually have the actual tiles, but has the walls, the doors, the interior walls, it has all the rest. So if you've already bought that, you can actually just buy the expansion. But it, it just it's very clear on the package. I just want to make sure you see that, that on the packages, it does not contain tiles. And I want to make sure you, you, you let your customers know that as well. But what's coming? Well, we talked about when we launched this back in Gamma and we showed this to you, we said we're going to have a very, very, I would say, large pipeline of what's coming. So in January, we're going to launch Corners and Curves. And you can see some of the images here. So you can start making curves and towers and corners and interior walls and tiles. This comes out as an expansion pack because, again, we think that you need the base set to play this. Uh, but again, it goes back to it has everything you see here. And then, of course, we have the dungeon and, of course, we have the town and village, right? So we're coming out with both of these sets. These come out in January. And let me tell you, they are spectacular and they look just as good as the original set. So what's coming? Well, also in January, we, we're coming out with Town Square. And so what is a Town Square? Well, you can kind of see what this does, but what it lets you start doing is it creates a, 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 a template for you to put down for any town and any village that you can plop your houses and plop your terrain on or plop your encounters on, right? It just helps you build out that terrain. If you want to, you know, put a, use the tiles to actually put something down for Town Square, you can put a lot of the dungeon dressings we're coming out with that help, help support that. In April, we're releasing one inch uh, expansion packs. And these one inch, again, we, when we launch, we launch with two inch. In April, we're coming out with one inch. Again, like I said, this is going to be a very full year. We have, of course, the town and village, and we have the dungeon tiles. Um, and then coming out after that, and again, I don't have any images for this to share with you, but we're having the cavern set, which comes out in June. So we're going to have a full on cavern sets that'll have dungeon dressings. And then we'll have another set coming out in the latter part of the year for sewers. And I think I mentioned this at Gamma, but I just want to let you know, our pipeline of Warlock is very, very full. And it's part of what we're focused on. And what we're focused on specifically for Warlock is availability. So we're going to have that base set available in stock uh, for you to order uh, for your customers. And then we're going to make, make sure that we have enough product to, to go through and a lot of the different things we're releasing throughout the year. But we're, we're really dedicated to, the, to focus, continue Warlock be a tile focused entity that is available in retail, focused on retail and available uh, to order. OK, let's talk about 4D and then I'll, I'll hand it over. So uh, one of the new releases we have is the Stone Bridge. It's, you can see it's one hundred and fifty dollars. But for you who have seen it and see how heavy it is and how weighty it is, we're really excited about this product. We just came out with the encampment and I, I can tell you, uh, sales are going really well on encampment. And again, this is just meant to be, I mentioned this for, uh, in the past, but really what I've done is I've said, you know, one of the things for 4D we wanna make sure we do is, is create entities that people want to play in and people play around. And this becomes part of that, right? So we have the encampment coming, so it's available now, but you can see, all the things that come with it for forty dollars it's a really good uh product for the price point uh coming in december we have the trebuchet now again look at that price point of 39.99 it's non-functional trebuchet but it is really amazing to make it functional i've had to charge double that and we want to try to keep things at an entry point where people can have but it has a, a figure the trebuchet some mounds some 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 block some shell de frise um but also we have in December coming out with a ballista. So you can kind of see two things that are really just fun and cool that come out in December. This is part of our kind of war machines. So again, what comes out, we have a catapult coming out in February and we have a battering ram coming out in February as well. And then there's gonna be two more war machines that come out next year and you'll wait to see on that. They'll come out probably in the June, July timeframe uh, that can just continue with these really cool things that we wanna to try to keep at the $40 price point. So then the last thing I want to talk about is things you're going to see. Uh, and, and Justin and uh, Justin Zoran, most of you know who he is. And I have been working on 
what we call encounters in the box for some time, probably for the last two years. And what these are are going to be $25 SKUs that enable you to create an encounter with everything you need. So those include generic encounters with simple write-up that are just generic for any RPG. It includes 3D minis. It includes warlock pieces. It includes 2D minis. It includes papercraft. It includes dungeon dressings. So for instance, one of the things, the first things we're doing is we're doing a prison break. So there'll be a prison break scenario. We'll have a mini of a guard. We'll have a mini of uh, a captain. We'll have a mini of an NPC. We'll have the actual warlock tiles that are for the walls. We're going to create warlock tiles for a prison, right? And we're going to have a basically a paper craft like floor. So you can actually have a tile floor and that'll be everything you need to just pop out. And if you have a, if you have a prison encounter, you can just pull this off your shelf. Uh, and, and plug it away. Caravan Ambush comes out also in May. And then we have in July, a gauntlet of traps and kobold capture where the kobolds have captured a little piglet from a village and you need to rescue it. Again, it goes back to we're really excited about all the things we're doing. And these encounters in the box, I think will be really, really cool. All right, I've talked enough. With that, I'll hand it back to Brian who will introduce uh, Jimmy. Thank you, Patrick. That's amazing stuff the team has been able to accomplish. You'll see the secret word below. Uh, hopefully you caught it. On Heroclix, we were really surprised by the demand on Heroclix during COVID. We thought that perhaps we'd see a downturn a little bit as stores can host in-store play, but we've actually seen a resurgence, a, a growth in Heroclix during this time. And so we're very excited to talk about future plans that, that we'd started even before COVID, uh, but sales of Heroclix are going up, which most people probably wouldn't have wagered on back in March. So we're excited to talk about it. I'm turning it over to James. Take it away, James. I would love to. So um, one of the things you heard Patrick mention was availability. And I want to just take a moment on that to say we've had some uh, availability issues with Heroclix with outages at different warehouses. And Alliance has been a great partner to work with us and try to make sure that we have um, connected the, the right people to the product. And so that that issue, if you experienced it, should be diminished going forward. We're really excited about Euroclix. We're coming up on 20 years. Uh, it, it broke a lot of boundaries as far as the uh, friendly price point, excellent pre-painted miniatures. And we're, we're looking to just go further with that this year. So could I get the next slide? So we're, we're going to have some, some big changes. We're going to have Galactus kind of being uh, representative of that, that first change of the, the excellent sculpts. So Galactus is actually going to be available to you already uh, for pre-order. Uh, October is when the first wave of Galactus are going to hit stores. And then November is going to be the second wave if you, if you missed out on getting your full quantity to begin with. We're hoping that his awesome nature of being a spectacular sculpt is going to help draw some people in who might not otherwise have a, a gaming interest in Heroclix. They just love great action figures and, and other things within the Marvel mythos. Okay, then. Perfect. So Marvel Heroclix X-Men House of X is coming, and it's going to be the, the SKUs that you're used to, but these sculpts are absolutely fantastic. We've got some slides to kind of show before and after uh, coming up. So there's improvements as far as an increased scale, right? So these, these heroes are going to look more heroic than they used to. We've got more uh, accessories. We've got more objects. We've got more energy effects. Uh, we've got better poses. There's enhanced definition in people's muscles and the, the fabric of their, their costumes. Uh, this, this is just a phase one of a, a general rise in quality that we're pursuing uh, across the entire Heroclix line. So there's going to, this is, this is step one. And uh, by the end of the presentation, you'll, you'll kind of see some of the digital renders for step two. Some of the gameplay improvements, uh, we're actually going to let you have the ability to play your favorite characters longer with Krico and Revival. Uh, they're, they're, we spoiled this a little bit through GTM Magazine. You're going to be able to play your X-Men through the entire game because of some of the storyline stuff that's going on where X-Men can't die. And we think it's going to be really fun and it's going to help make the game more beginner friendly by people getting to utilize their favorites. Also, for, for kind of the experience of the booster, we've got some, some surprises on the next few slides. So uh, some boosters are just going to have team, like basically a pre-constructed team within them. It's going to be something that feels ripped out of the comics. It's going to be 300 points, you know, 
very very close to 300 points ready to go uh really deliver on that thematic experience that people love from hero clicks we've got another uh team booster on the next slide to show you uh so x-force marauders the the comics are super hot right now uh, anyone who has a store that does comics and games is probably having people come in excited about these and so we're, we're glad to bring the excitement to hero clicks as well next slide we also have the return of team up cards so it's going to do a great job of connecting the X-Men that are already in people's collections to this new set. It's going to do a great job of connecting uh, this set to the sets that come after. And so th there's going to be uh, a constant context check by players to make sure that they uh, are getting the most out of this. Next slide. We also have more unpainted hero clicks coming. So the next wave of unpainted hero clicks is going to be Fantastic Four. This should be uh, January of next year. And it, everyone who likes the activity, just, just like what they do with the X-Men, is going to enjoy this. We've also got a Fantastic Four Future Foundation coming up. This is going to be, again, a great the, the same great SKUs that your store has probably already done well with, the, the Booster Brick, the fa, uh, Fast Forces. Can I get the next slide? And uh, the, the characters that are, that are super recognizable, just the best cast of the last 10 years of the Fantastic Four and Future Foundation. Um, just fun characters that we're, we're glad to bring to Heroclix. Also, we're gonna have awesome alternate versions of characters that maybe didn't make the cut for our Fantastic Four set that came out this year. We also have Captain and Sidekick gameplay that is going to be coming out. We're gonna have alternate win conditions. Common figures are gonna be more straightforward and easier for beginners to play, but they're gonna have interesting combos with figures of higher rarities so that there's still potential to unlock their, their biggest power possible. So uh, next slide. So we're gonna see uh, captain and sidekicks being a thing going forward in hero clicks where you can kind of combo your figures together in, in fresh ways, even if they're not a you know perfect comic book accurate match. Uh, beyond Future Foundation, we've also got more WWE hero clicks coming up. So WWE Superstar Shakeup is going to be another set with a brand new uh, WWE ring. There's going to be additional superstar SKUs coming out at the same time, but I don't think that we've shown these sculpts off yet. Uh, we also have Wonder Woman 80th anniversary coming out. Uh, so this is going to be a huge set for DC Hero Clicks. Uh, I, I love that there is something for everyone in this set. It is, uh, on the next slide, you're going to see that there's more than just Wonder Woman sculpts and themes. You've got, uh, you know, Harley Quinn. You've got Cersei impersonating Wonder Woman. Batman and Superman are going to have gameplay that is unique to playing alongside Wonder Woman and the Amazons. Uh, you've got some Lantern stuff going on in this set. Uh, it's over between the equipment and the figures. There's more than 80 things to collect here. This is going to be an enormous hero click set. Uh, can you get the next slide? So we're going to see tons of equipment and accessories. We're also going to see more captains and sidekicks. So there's going to be some interplay between Future Foundation and the Amazons. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and the, the, we, we just think this is part of a huge uh, resurgence of Heroclix interest that we're going to be really excited to help you capitalize on at your store. Uh, we also have some great information of upcoming Dice Master stuff. Uh, if I can get the next slide. So. There, there was kind of the, the shift to campaign boxes and team packs, and now we've shifted back to draft packs. That was overwhelmingly what we were hearing from the fan base and the stores that are doing well with Dice Masters um, are still doing well with this product, which like Brian said with Heroclix that we were surprised at how COVID proof it was. This product was designed to be played specifically in stores for tournaments. And instead we can't really have that happening and it's still doing well for us. And, and fans are demanding it. The cards are better looking than ever. The dice are as excellent as always. Um, the, the collectability is a little bit deeper with uh, special premium versions. Uh, these are some of the, the cards, you know, it's, it's the highly recognizable characters from the comic books. We also have uh, a special treat. Um, Fantastic Four versus Galactus is gonna be a solo play intro, intro skew. We've never done this before. It's gonna get one player started playing Dice Masters. They're gonna be able to test their team out and see if they can defeat Galactus. We've also got some uh, other surprises. So next slide, we've got Kryptonite Crisis, Dice Masters coming, uh, Superman, the Daily Plan, all the great DC stuff. 
We've got Marvel Secret Wars coming up next year, and we also have uh, X-Men, House of X, Dice Masters coming up later in the year after that. So with, with all that being said, we've got a lot of exciting stuff coming up, but my time is up, and I need to uh, let Brian do the next introduction. So thanks for coming. Thank you. And a reminder for those of you who might be late and just coming in, you can check us out at the WizKids private Facebook group, WizKids Direct, it's called. That should pull you up. You have to answer some questions. We'll let you in. Additionally, someone asked, hey, I don't use Facebook. You can use the WizKids Info Network, otherwise known as the WIN, W-I-N. You can sign up, get solicits and updates on products and launch days and has a lot of our SKU information. Definitely check us out there. Now, it's my great pleasure to introduce Zev, who's going to walk us through our board game portfolio. Take it away, Zev. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our upcoming uh, board games for the rest of this year and a couple that are coming in 2021. Uh, the first one, which is actually releasing today, is the Super Skill Pinball. It's a one to four player roll and write with a pinball theme. Uh, we've gotten a lot of great reviews uh, on the game. Uh, I do want to stress that we, we also initiated a program uh, with Alliance where you bought two copies and get one free, plus we have the demo packs. And we want to thank you very much for making it very successful. And I think uh, it shows based on the, the orders that we've gotten. Uh, so this game is one to four players. You'll see four different uh, uh, pinball tables. Uh, it has been cited as probably one of the most thematic roll and rights out there. Uh, and it does feel like you're playing pinball. Uh, these are some shots of the various uh, pinball uh, machines. This is the cyber hack. You can see a close up of the pinball field, which has features of pinball. We have spinners, we have drop targets, uh, we have alleys, we have the flippers, in lanes, out lanes, and things like you can nudge. Uh, this is a way you, uh, you roll dice because it's rolling right. Uh, but you can nudge the dice to a number that you need, but you have to be careful of tilting. Uh, so be wary of that. Uh, you'll see at the bottom of your screen there, there's a, a, what we have, the pinball. That's the marker. It's a half dome, like electroplated silver uh, a plastic piece, which looks really good and helps you uh, feel immersed in playing pinball. And yep, and we have more to come in 2021 due to the success of the uh, of the game so far, based on the orders we've seen, uh, we definitely have more tables uh, in the works. Next slide, please. Uh, Seastead, last, uh, last year we, uh, produced, we published a game called Flotilla. Uh, it did very well, uh, cited for having innovative mechanics and also being in a very different world, a world in which uh, the earth is uh, uh, flooded, you know, the oceans have risen and we all live on flotillas. Uh, Seastead, uh, leans into that world. So it's a two-player game in the world of Flotilla. And I stress that to show that it is not a two-player Flotilla game. It's a two-player game set in the world of, uh, of Flotilla. Uh, you'll recognize some of the art because we use uh, some of the, the characters that were in the base game uh, for use here as specialists. Uh, in this game, you, are, you can dive and build. And everything that you do, even though it's competitive, you're also helping your opponent a little bit. So when you dive, for example, you're diving for resources, you will get some resources and your opponent will get some resources. You can also build. When you build certain buildings, that can also help your opponent. So for example, if I build a port, I get a dock tile and a dock tile can give points to your opponent if that opponent builds certain buildings that match what's on the dock tile in the certain area in the flotilla. Also by building ships, you can give a discount uh, for building uh, for your opponent as well as for yourself. So there's a lot of that competitive, but I'm still helping uh, my opponent there. And here you see uh, a bunch of the uh, different components there. We have uh, a lot of the wooden pieces uh, here, about like, uh, I think 20 per player. You have the, uh, the resources, kelp metal artifacts. You have uh, uh, toxicity tokens, and they're called actually cleanup tokens that are worth points at the end. Uh, you see a doctile over there in the middle as well. And we're very excited for this two-player game. Early, uh, early reviews have been very, very, very positive. And we should have uh, some more reviews up uh, after, the, um, after this presentation, after the show, uh, as well as some walkthroughs. Next slide. Gates of Mara. Gates of Mara coming out for November. By the way, C said it was October. Gates of Mara is set for November. This is a 
um, uh, a worker placement engine building game. You are uh, placing, uh, you represent a tribe. You have four tribes in the game, two to four players. You're representing your tribe and you're bringing your people into the various uh, realms, uh, the elemental planes, the elemental realms of the game. And you're using that to gain influence as well as uh, rec uh, get uh, uh, resources to build enchantments, uh, to increase your influence. Here you see a tribe board. So it shows you that each, to get a, a player on the board, you pay energy to get it on the board. And also they have powers and you have to sometimes pay energy to activate those powers. But then you can get things like banners and enchantments and other things that you can attach to a worker so that they can do multiple things. And sometimes you have to pay energy for that. So again, a very different type of game, a uh, very different type of uh, worker placement uh, engine building game. Uh, here you see some enchantments at the, the bottom of the board there. These are, again, uh, enchanters can buy them and you attach them to various figures. You'll notice the bases have different uh, shapes, hexes, circles, triangles, squares. That also determines where enchantments can go, on whom they can be placed, as well as where you can place them uh, on the certain realms uh, in the game. Some realms uh, will have circle spots, so that, that, uh, some will have squares, some will have triangles. So what's interesting to note is the leader, which, uh, which has a triangular base, can be placed in circle, square, and triangle, but based on the space, their influence will change. So if you put them on a triangle space, they'll be able to influence all the realms by one point, but if you put them on a square space, you'll be able to influence two points worth on two realms, and if you put them on a circular space, they'll be able to uh, affect that realm with three points of influence. And here's some more cards. So here's some banner cards. Uh, that the, the picture there, you'll see a caravan. Uh, caravans are also things that you could bring into play to get you extra influence, extra resources, uh, uh, extra and extra action. So it's part of the engine building uh, that you can do with Gates of Mara. Sidereal Confluence. So I, I just want to stress that uh, if you've noticed, and hopefully you have noticed, that we've uh, increased the, the quality of our art and graphic design in our games. And we've been doing that a lot with our new games. But we've also taken a look at some of our older games, our older hits, and applying that same philosophy. So Sidereal Confluence, here we have the remastered edition. You'll notice a brand new cover, beautiful cover by Quantra Maria. Uh, and also the game inside has been changed uh, tremendously. Uh, all new graphic design uh, for all the components. Um, and uh, the game itself is pretty much the same. It's just the, the look of the game has changed. We tweak the rule book a little bit and some of the components, we changed the size. We had eight millimeter and 10 millimeter cubes. Now they're eight and 12. So you can distinguish them better and they're also in plastic. So we upgraded the quality of the components as well as the look of the of the pieces there and the cover and the art and the graphic design. Uh, Fantasy Realms, as you can see, this is also a, a new cover, uh, again, enhancing the, the look of our board games. Uh, but here we're announcing an expansion. This is an evergreen title. Fantasy Realms is an evergreen title for us. And uh, we've decided to expand upon it by having the Cursed Horde expansion coming in January. Uh, again, you'll see the new art style for the cards. Uh, this game adds new suits. You'll see buildings, outsiders, and undead, uh, which uh, add to the game. You put them in the regular deck, and it changes the game. If you use this, the, the new suits, you don't have to. But if you use the new suits, it changes the game where now you have an eight-card hand, and you play until there are 12 cards in the discard pile. Um, also with these new suits, uh, just go back one second, with the new suits, uh, we also have revisions of some of the base cards that will work with uh, the new set. There's about seven or eight new cards that you will also replace from the base game uh, into the new deck. Next slide, please. Uh, the Cursed uh, and the Cursed Horde comes with Cursed Items. Uh, this is going to be a separate deck of cards. Everybody will have a Cursed Item uh in in front of them if you notice they have a lot of negative uh, point values there because they are cursed uh but they do some really cool effects and if you use the cursed item then it will score against you at the end of the game but you're not required to use the item and sometimes you can even discard an item and get a new item but when you use an item then you also get a new item so with the 
with the uh, the risk, the, the negative point value, there's the reward of hopefully using the ability uh, um, uh, put on the card here. But notice that it's a module. So you can play with just the new suit. You can just play your base game with the cursed items, or you can do it with both things. You can have the base game adding the new suits and the cursed items. Uh, so uh, that was, uh, so going further to 2021, we have uh, Cedar's Exodus. Uh, no, that's fine. We're, the Cedar's is fine. The, uh, with Cedar's Exodus, uh, this is a license from a French game. It's a, uh, a whole new sci-fi universe uh, to the game. It's a Euro style uh, game where you are placing negotiators. You're trying to build an arc to save the colonists from a planet and everyone is submitting their design for the arc but you have to build modules and you have to uh, assign crew to them. And you're using negotiators uh, to do that, to acquire the cards you need to build your arc. There's also a cast system because it's, uh, it's far future and there are several casts with different, um, uh, with different abilities and different uh, uh, strengths and weaknesses. So you're trying to uh, manage that as well as part of your arc. And there's a lot of interaction uh, with the opponents. Uh, but it is part of a larger universe, which could expand um, uh, even further. Next slide. Uh, Clash of Cultures Monumental Edition. Uh, many people may uh, remember Clash of Cultures came out in 2011. Uh, this is uh, a redo of the game, but so much more. It is uh, all new art, all new graphic design, but it also includes the very hard to get Civilizations expansion. Uh, it also has the Aztec promos in here. So you can have 350 minis, including eight wonders with a gold, with a very nice gold wash to it, gold color, black wash to it. Uh, in the original game, uh, you only had, the, you had seven wonders and they were standups, uh, standees, uh, but now they're gonna be miniatures. Uh, prior to our announcement of this to get the base game and the civilization expansion, it was roughly about you know two hundred dollars or so because the civilizations aftermarket was very very expensive. So here, the everything is here is for one hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, so not only does it have the wonders as well, it has uh, uh, here's uh, some examples of the again the graphic design and the art uh, to the game. Move uh, further here, the different cards. Uh, here you see the, the player boards. The player aids are now on also a punch board material. There's a, a round track. The, uh, the, the player board shows you the same technology tree. Just, in it, just to let you know that we've tweaked a lot of the, the, the abilities, the technology, uh, the cards. Uh, some of the rules have been tweaked. The, the battle mechanic has been uh, changed. Instead of six-sided dice, there are now nine 12-sided dice with icons, so we have a clash mechanic involved there. Uh, here are some examples of the civilizations, uh, 15 civilizations that uh, you can start with. So in the base game, you can play as just a generic civilization and grow from there. Or when you add the civilizations expansion, you can start with a named civilization with their own powers. And they also each have uh, three leaders in which you can uh, acquire during the game. This is a picture of uh, some of the miniatures here. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you can see just a, a load of miniatures, the cubes, uh, the, the, mar the obelisk, the markets, the observatories, cavalry. Um, it, it's just, it's chock full of stuff. It's, it's truly, truly uh, monumental. Uh, and with that, uh, I'll end and uh, hand it over to Brian. Thank you all for coming. Wow, Zev. I mean, a crazy amount of great product coming out. Uh, and you'd think that that is it, and we'd be done maybe for the year or two, but no, there's there's a lot of things coming. And I'm going to allude to it, and I can't get very specific right now. We we're hoping to be a little more specific today, but in the coming days and weeks, uh, expect some very major announcements about expanding our lineup of D&D categories later this year. Uh, we're very excited to uh, be underway and working on them. We just can't talk in great detail about them, but we have a lot of exciting news to come. Reminder to check us out on our WizKids Facebook, WizKids Direct private group. Make sure you fill out all the questions. The WizKids Info Network for ongoing solicitations and information on our products. I want to thank Alliance and everybody who tuned in today and is watching on a later date. We appreciate your support. Thank you very much.